In the last lecture, we learned about redirect to action result. So basically, we use redirect to action result in order to redirect a user from one URL to another URL within the same application. Basically, we use redirect to action for local redirection. And to that redirect to action result, we specify the action method name to which we want to redirect the user, the controller name inside which that action method resides. And then if you want to pass some route parameters, we can specify that by specifying the third argument. Now here, when we are using this redirect to action method, behind the scenes, it is going to return an instance of redirect to action result. And there, the fourth parameter will be set to false. That means in the response, the status code will be 302, move temporarily. But if we want to send status code 301 in the response, in that case, we can use redirect to action permanent. And this method is also basically going to return an instance of redirect to action result. But there, the fourth parameter will be set to true. And this simply means that in the response, the status code will be 301. That means the URL has been moved permanently. All right. So this is one way of doing local redirection. Now, for the local redirection, apart from having this redirect to action result class, we also have another action result class which we can use for local redirection. For example, we can return a new instance of local redirect result. And this local redirect result, it is also used for local redirection. That means redirection within the same application or within the same domain. And here, to this local redirect result, to this constructor, the first argument will be the URL to which we want to redirect the user. In this case, the URL is going to be slash category slash books. So we can specify that as the first argument to this constructor. And the second argument will be the value for permanent redirection. So if we set it to true, that means the redirection will be permanent. And in the response, the status code will be 301. But if we set it to false, or if we don't specify it, in that case, it will be a temporary redirection. And the status code in the response will be 302. So let me go ahead and, and let me comment this line, this return statement. And here, let's say we want to do a permanent redirection. So here I will set the second parameter to true. So here I will set the second parameter to true. So in this case, it will be a permanent redirection. And in the response, the status code will be 301. Let's quickly test it. Let's run this application. And in the URL, let's type root URL slash books. So you see, we have been redirected to slash category slash books. And if I open the network tab here, let me go ahead and let me make the request again. So root URL slash books. I'm making request to this URL, but we are being redirected to root URL slash category slash books. And here you will see two requests. So in the last lecture, we learned that when we make the first request, the server will send a response with a status code 301 because here we are doing a permanent redirection and with the location header set with the new URL to which we want to redirect the user. So if I open this first request, you can see the status code is 301 and here we have the location header where we have the new URL to which we want to redirect the user. And if I open the second request, the second request will be made automatically by the client, in our case, the browser. And in there, you can see the status code as 200. You can see the response body. We can also see the response body here. So this is the response body. Okay, so it is working in the same way as it was working for redirect to action result. But here, instead of specifying the action method name and the controller name, we are simply specifying the local URL to which we want to redirect the user. Now, when we use redirect to action result, there we also have an option to pass some route parameters. But when we are using this local redirect result, how can we pass a route parameter? Let's try to understand it. So let's go to this store controller and there let's say this URL is also going to take some route parameters. So for example, let's say book ID and also is logged in. Okay. And what I will do is I'll go here. I'll copy this complete logic from here, which we have commented till here, or I will simply cut it from here. Okay, let's go to the store controller.cs and let's paste it here. Let me go ahead and let me uncomment it. And here we are not reading a query string. We want to read a parameter. So on this request object, we will have a dictionary called route values. And then we want to check 
whether we have the book ID parameter or not. If we do not have the book ID parameter, we are going to return this response. But if we have the book ID route parameter here again, let me change it to request dot route values. And the parameter name is book ID. And in the same way here also, let's use route values. And the parameter name is is logged. Now keep in mind that these parameter names are case insensitive. So even if I call it as is logged with I in caps, but in the parameter we are specifying I in lowercase, it is not going to matter because these are case insensitive. Now let's say when the user will make a request to this URL slash books, there he can specify the book ID and is logged as query strings. So we are going to read those query strings. All right, now we want to pass this book ID and is logged as the route parameter. And we can simply do that by specifying a slash and there we can specify these variables. And in order to use these variables inside these double quotes, here I'm going to use this dollar sign. And then we can easily specify these variables using curly braces like this. So first we want to pass book ID and then we also want to pass is logged. And in the result, let's go ahead and let's specify some content where we can also show book ID and whether the user is logged in or not. So here let's say user logged quills. And here again, let me go ahead and let me use a dollar sign before this so that we can use a variable inside these double quotes. And here I want to use is log variable. So what I will do is I will cut this statement from here. Here I will create a Boolean variable. I'll call it is logged equals this expression. And then let's go ahead and let's use this variable here as well as here. Okay, and here we have an extra closing parenthesis. And here we have missed that closing parenthesis. All right. And let's also specify the book ID. So let's say book ID equals and then the book ID variable. So let me go ahead and let me copy this book ID variable. Let's paste it here. All right. Now let's go ahead and let's run this application. Let's go to slash books and then let's specify some query strings. So let's say book ID equals 101 and is logged equals true. Let's press enter. So here you see it says user log true and book ID 101. And if you notice the URL, it is slash category slash books slash 101 slash true. Okay, so here we have been redirected to this URL. So this is how you can pass route parameters when you're using local redirect result. Now keep in mind that this local redirect result and redirect to action result, they can be used only for local redirection. That means you can use these action results when you want to redirect a user from one URL to another URL, which exists in the same application in the same domain. You cannot use them to redirect a user to some external website, for example, from your application to google.com or from your application to facebook.com or any other external website. You cannot use these action results. And by the way, we can also replace this new instance of local redirect result with local redirect method. And there we don't need to specify the second parameter. So when we use local redirect in that case, it is going to return an instance of local redirect result. And there the status code will be 302. But if you want to redirect permanently, in that case, you can use local redirect permanent. Okay. So as I mentioned, we can use local redirect result or redirect to action result only for local redirection. That means to redirect a user from one URL to another URL, which exists within the same application, within the same domain. But if we want to redirect a user from one URL to another URL, and that URL exists outside of the application, outside of the domain which our application is using, for that we have another action result called redirect result. So here we can say return redirect result. Okay, and since it is a class, we need to use a new keyword before it because we want to instantiate this redirect result class. And there we can specify the external URL. For example, here I will say www.google.com. Let me also use HTTPS before this. 
okay and then we can also specify whether this redirection should be permanent or temporary if we want permanent redirection we can specify true otherwise we can specify false or we can omit this second argument in that case it will be a temporary redirection so let me go ahead and let me comment this line here we want to make a temporary redirection and we want to redirect the user to google.com whenever the user types slash books in the url let's run this application and let me go ahead and let me make a request to root url slash books and now it should redirect us to google.com okay so for external redirection you can use redirect result and then you can specify the url the external url to which you want to redirect now let's also see if we can use this redirect result for local redirection so let me copy this url let me specify it here and since we are using this book id and is logged variables let me also put dollar here okay and let's go ahead and let's run this application and in the url let's type root url slash books and then let's also specify some query string so book id and is logged and let's press enter and here we have the correct response so we can also use redirect result for local redirection as well but generally for the local redirection we use either local redirect result or redirect to action result mostly we use redirect to action result because there we can specify the action method name and the controller name to which we want to redirect the user but sometimes we might want to redirect the user based on the url in that case we can use local redirect result now redirecting to external websites we rarely use in an application but sometimes the requirement is such that we might want to redirect a user to some external website in that case we can use redirect result all right so this is all from this lecture if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day